All right, so we're going to start uh, with our next talk. Um, our next talk is about the S-Review video review system, which is the video system we use at Fosdem to review video. So please welcome the author, the author Wouter. Hi. Um, thank you. Uh, so yeah, my name is Wouter Verhelst. I've been a, a Fosdem staff member since 2010, and I've been um, involved with Fosdem video on and off over that period. Uh, and since two years, since 2017, actually th the third year now, I, we use a video review system here that has made our uh, review workflow uh, be a lot more smoother and a lot better. And I'm going to try to show you how. Um, so let me s first start with uh, a little bit of a background. Why did we do this? Uh, at Fosdem here, um, we've always had video f f since very early on. I think 2001 or 2002 was the first year. Uh, that we did f video, um, but we never really recorded every room until 2014. Uh, before then, we just did like five rooms, um, and then reviewing that, that's an afternoon, and after the afternoon, everything's reviewed, and you just need to transcode, and that's scriptable, right? Um, 2014 was the first year we did every room at Fosdem. Now, everybody here will know that Fosdem is huge. We've got 24, 25, 26 rooms. It differs a bit from year to year. Um, now, if you have t 16 hours, well, two days of eight hours, 16 hours per room, 25 rooms, that, that's a lot of data. That's a lot of video that you have to get the interesting parts out of. I mean, we don't want to do a lot of editing of the videos, but we still need to have just the part that's interesting, and we don't want to see people walking in the room, people leaving the room, that kind of thing, right? Um, originally, in the first few years, um, only the video team would do the review, and there's like a handful of people there. They have to do it in their spare time. It takes a time. Uh, it takes a, a long time. And in 2014, the first year with every room, we were finished by September. And that was only because at that point we just gave up and we said, well, screw it. We're not going to get ready anyway. We'll just do whatever is in the database right now, and we're not going to review any further. So if you, review, if you s watch some of the videos from 2014, you may actually see that there's some data in there, which is like not really what you want. We did a bit better in 2015 and 2016, but that was still, um, in both cases, by the time we, um, uh, we were finished by releasing all videos, most, uh, in most cases, we actually already started to organize the next FOSDEM. Uh, and obviously, this was not sustainable in the long term. So in 2017, I decided to write SReview, which is the system I'm using now. Um, and it helped, uh, because in 2017, we were ready by late March which is a, a month and a half after the uh, event, which is a lot faster. Uh, 2018, we did a bit longer, but that was because we had a few issues that we couldn't really fix easily. And uh, actually, the majority of our talks were released two weeks after FOSDEM, so we were a lot faster even. So that was a progress, right? So um, I'm not going to pretend that I, that I invented the whole system. There were other people who wrote um, uh, review systems for conferences because we don't really have a lot of post-processing. You just need to review, pick out the interesting parts, and then transcode and release. Um, the f the f the, these are the three ones that I know of. They're all free software. First one is a, of, uh, a set of scripts. It, they're not actually named. They're scripts that hook into Pentabarf. Um, they're very, very basic. It's just a web form. You, do some, you mount some NFS thing. It assumes DV everywhere because at the time DV was what DebConf was using. Um, it runs all over NFS, so you actually can only use it from the event itself because you can't do NFS over the internet unless you want to be insecure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there was there were some, uh, yeah, issues with that. Um, the CCC, uh, Chaos Communication Congress, they wrote their own thing called uh, C3 Tracker. Um, it's a fairly complicated setup of Samba shares and Fuse file systems and then KDN Live to do the actual review. Um, but the downside of the system is that it requires training of the people who are going to review. It's not a lot of training. It's only a few 10 minutes. But that doesn't scale to what we wanted to do here. What we want to do here is to um, crowdsource the review. We're just going to say to people, here's a link, review your own talk, and come back with, with our uh, review. And if you need to train people first, then that doesn't work. So I didn't want to use that. Also, very important to me, in a way, at the time when I wrote SReview, uh, the C3 tracker was not entirely free software. There were a few parts of it which were not free software. That has been fixed since, but that was another argument for me to, to write something else. Finally, there's something called Vipar. Um, Vipar is a review system written by Carl Karsten, who used to do a lot of the um, Python 
uh, video stuff. I don't know if he still does that, um, but he, that's where he started. It's written in Python. It does a lot of things really well, um, but a, a few other things are not, not that easy to use, and it's also very difficult to configure um, because it's not that well documented. I can see people uh, nodding and agreeing with me, so um, it's, it's, yeah, it's nice, but yeah, there's a but. So how does it work? How does SFU work? Well, it's almost fully automated. I, every, every bit that I can automate is automated. Um, so we just, it, it, it assumes that a, a room just has a timeline of video files. There can be multiple video files. It just assumes that every video file has a start time and a length. And it just goes like, well, this starts at 1 o'clock and it's half an hour long. The next one starts at half past one and is also half an hour long, so we have an hour of video, right? Um, it knows that there's a schedule in that room, so you need to actually put the, 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 the schedule into the, into the system. And it will go like, well, we have an hour of video and I have a talk that's scheduled from 10 past one and would run for half an hour, so yeah, we have all the content for that video. And it automatically creates a first cut. That first cut, which in this uh, example would be, will exactly be one half hour, starting from the scheduled start and ending at the scheduled end. It is almost certainly wrong. Um, but we have a first cut that's sent to um, the speakers and the room managers who get a link. They can see that. They can make adjustments. And after they made those adjustments, they can uh, ask for a new cut. And the system just goes back through the, the first st st uh, stage and does the, the new cut again. Um, and then the next one is probably right because we just entered uh, corrections. So then the speaker can say, yeah, this is good. This looks good. And then all transcoding and publishing uh, is done fully automatic. There's some, some pre-roll that we do, which is like an opening credit, which shows the, the title screen. There's a, a post-roll in which we show our sponsors. It also does audio normalization using a tool that does full automatic. So there's really, it, 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 it makes it quite nice, and it should be, should be doable, right? Um, oh, right, sorry. Uh, we did do a lot of work on the user interface this year. Um, I just did a talk at 2 o'clock in the open design dev room, open source design dev room, sorry. Um, so if you're interested in how that worked, I recommend that you uh, look at the talk when it gets released, uh, the video, which is not there yet, um, but that's uh, how that worked. How do we do it internally? Um, well, it's mostly a web interface. The, the actual transcoding and, and, and cutting and everything is done with FFmpeg. Um, the original version that I wrote in 2017 just queried the database and then did system FFmpeg command line that was, had gone through shell, uh, through in, com uh, interpolation, etc. So it was fairly um, basic. Uh, right now we've done a few things uh, differently. I have an object-oriented um, interface to deal with videos. Uh, SVG video, so you can just say, um, here's a video file, tell me how long it is, and then it will just run ffprobe in the background and give you that back. Um, I want to create a video that's that long from that input file, so it will then just generate a, an ffmpeg command line that does that. Um, and it's sufficiently abstract, I think, that it doesn't actually require ffmpeg in the back end. In the back end. And I actually like it, and I'm thinking of maybe splitting off SVG video from the S3 view code base itself because it could be generally useful outside of S3 view as well. Um, I actually rewrote pretty much everything at least once uh, since 2017, uh, except for the database. The database layer was designed quite well. Um, I expected to have to do that because in 2017 I just wanted it to work. Uh, it was a quick and dirty hack and I cleaned it up quite nicely since. It's still fairly small. It's less than 10,000 lines of code. Uh, when I checked, it was like 9,500 or something, so it's fairly, fairly small. Um, I have to run because I'm going fairly slow. What is not in SVU? SVU does not have a scheduler. Um, if you, I mean, it's, there's lots of jobs that need to be run. You need to, tra need to transcode things. You need to upload things. Uh, so we've got one master host and a few hosts that run jobs. We don't actually schedule that. I have been doing some work in, in high-performance computing. And I just used one of those tools to schedule jobs on other systems. Uh, Grid Engine in my case, but it doesn't uh, require Grid Engine. You can use any uh, DRM system. Um, so that's actually a major difference between uh, the C3 Tracker and, and Vipar. Um, C3 Tracker is mainly a scheduler. And the review part is just, well, we use KDN Live, so they didn't implement that. Whereas in my case, it's pretty much the opposite. Uh, Vipar has a fairly important scheduler part, too, although you can work around it. It's different. 
Um, there's also a few things that are not in the code yet that I do want to add. Um, the administrator interface currently is mm, fairly basic because I haven't gotten around to making it well yet. Um, so that's something I want to deal with. Uh, right now, if you create an output profile, so you can tell SRQ I want an, a WebM and an MP4 and uh, an AV1 version of this video, and it will then transcode them one after the other. Um, so my plan is to also make that happen in parallel so that it will upload a version as soon as it's ready. Um, the database abstraction, we have been starting work on that, but it would be the intent to, uh, have, have, uh, to work on that a bit more. Also, there should be an RPC subsystem, which is related to that. Right now, every script just accesses the database directly, and I want to do some XML RPC or JSON or whatever, something like that. And, well, yeah, um, I actually found some bugs when I was dealing with it right here, so um, fixing those would be nice too, I'm sure. Um, that's pretty much it. Actually, I thought I had more slides. Um, I can maybe do a little bit of a, of an, of a show how it works. Let me open this. Um, uh, Where's that browser? Uh, oh, yeah, that helps. Oh, uh, there we go. So... This is the uh, overview system of, um, of how SVU of itself. Uh, we have uh, things here. Those are all the talks that it knows about. There are many talks because FOSDEM is a large event. Um, we have an overview at, th at the bottom. So basically every talk is in a particular state in the system. Um, waiting for files means we're still waiting for content. Cutting means, well, that part is currently go going through a cut. I mean, we're extracting just in content. These are waiting for people to review. Well, it shows there. Five of them are currently transcoding. One of them has already been released, which is the opening talk of this morning. Um, these were, are where people entered something in review saying, well, can somebody please look at this because I think it doesn't work, so I'll have to go in there. Um, and this is because uh, my colleagues of the video team made a mistake, and I have to keep those on hold for today. Um, we'll fix that today or tonight. The final one, ignored, is because there is no data for the key signing, and obviously we don't uh, release a video for that, which would be very boring. So that's why that one is ignored. But the, 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 the schedule is important automatically from the website, so if I, if I remove it, it would be back the next time the schedule runs. So that's why we just said to ignore, and then we didn't see that. Um, I think I can. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, I can't. I was going to show you the review interface, but um, the interface requires a link that has 64 random characters. I'm not going to type 64 random characters on my phone. So that's not happening. Um, any questions? Go ahead. Um, yeah, wait for the microphone, please. Sorry? Uh, have you considered um, any sort of physical button for start and end of talk, inserting cue markers into the stream, so that, you know, at a minimum, there's a copy that can go up that is at least trimmed? Um, um, so Viper does actually have support for that, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, the problem is, um, let's say, I say thank you, and then everybody starts clapping, and somebody pushes the button, and then somebody goes, up, oh, but hang on, but I have a question. Now you've got a marker on the wrong location. Mm -hmm. um, so, for that, so you will need to have that review anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I, for that reason, I don't think there's much of, a, of an advantage, because it will confuse you. Because, or or it, it, the, the person who is pushing the button pushes it like three times, so which one is the right one now, right? Um, so it's, 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 it, it's, it's not a bad idea per se, but it's, 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 it, you, it, it won't be good enough. You will need to review, to review anyway. So in that respect, I was like, let's, let's not go there. Um, but uh, was there was something else I want to say? No. Um, yeah, uh, it, 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 it could be useful, but not really. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that too, exactly. Anyone else? Other questions? I ran through my slides, I guess. <laughs> Otherwise, what we could do is that I couldn't check my mail and... I yeah, that's a good idea. And then you can watch... Uh, yeah, that we can Just do. Leave me. Then we can do a live uh, review yes. here. I have to change user. Sure, sure. And we can work on a 
So all the review requests are sent to the speaker as well as the dev room responsible. And since he is a dev room responsible, okay. yeah, that's cool. Is that enough for you? That's good enough. Okay. Maybe make it uh, look good again on the. Yeah, so I'm Something's working on it. Making noise. There we go. Okay, I think it's good. Uh, this is not what we want. That's not. That is not what I want. What do you want? You've got the control video. The, I think this, the no. I think the external screen is not. And it's, it's not on the mirror right oh now. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> ah, no worries. Sorry there we go. There we go. So basically, this, it shows you what video re we're reviewing, and it gives a little bit of, in, of instruction on what to do. If you scroll down a bit for me. So this is the video. You can watch it. And then if you go like, mm, something's wrong with it, then we select the bottom option. Can you do that for me? Uh, the video has problems. Uh, so yeah. Problem the, that one. Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah, no worries. I should there we go. There, and now we can select, oh, well, it's too early that it starts, or it starts too late. Or um, we have previews of the audio channels, because uh, the microphones over here like the lapel mic is going through a mixer and is going with XLR into the camera. But we also use the on-camera uh, microphone as a backup, which goes to the other channel. So we actually have uh, two channels. And then if something is wrong with my lapel mic or whatever, then the speaker can at least select the in-camera microphone as a backup. And the third one is both mixed together, yada, yada, yada. Um, we used to have some AV sync issues in past years, so then we can fix that up as well. And if that's not good enough, then people can enter some explanation here. And then the talk gets marked as broken. It's a really basic interface. Um, it's a hand-holding interface. It was, it's much easier to use this time around than it was last year. So if you were a speaker at Fosdem last year, you probably won't recognize this. Um, but it's exactly the same thing. And uh, the back end is just scripts calling it. Back. Yeah, OK. <coughs> There you go, wow. Um, so does fiddling with this, like if you say use the other channel, does that actually reprocess that? Or yeah. Or does this just send a message to somebody with a clue to? No, no, no. So the, um, then, or if you have a more complicated problem, then you send a message to somebody with a clue to say, right, actually, right, right, it's right. completely bust. You'll need so, to take a bit of this and a bit of that. Right, right. All, all of the uh, form up there is processed automatically by the system. So every change you enter there um, will be used. If you enter something here, free form, then yeah, then somebody who has a clue, we'll have to look at, log in and check and see what's happening. In most cases, most cases, we'll have to say, well, sorry, we can't help you then. Mm. Uh, or we can say, well, here's access to the raw data. If you want to just go ahead and I'll inject it into the system, that works too. We do that occasionally. So um, someone could get in access to all the raw streams if they needed to, like, you know, if you had to drop out for mic for part of the talk, so you had to use this bit and then you could flip the other one and then put it back in. Like, now you need to do some video to editing. Right, is, right. Is there a way of that? Or is well, that we, we don't actually throw the data away. It's all on the server. Uh, some of it is on SSD backups, et cetera, et cetera. So there is an option to do that. It's a lot more work, and we, we won't do it. But if a right. speaker says, I want to invest the time, then we'll go, yeah, sure. Here's the files, and have fun with it, right? Yeah. And then when they give it back to us, we'll, we'll upload it into the system and then publish it as well. But other than that, we don't actually uh, we don't do much now. Any other question? We still have five minutes to go. No? We have one minute and ten seconds left, so. <laughs> Are you doing lots of reviews for Fosdem next year remotely? Uh, I hope to be here next year. I don't know yet. Andy knows that I'm moving to Cape Town in a week or so, so. Okay, so thank you. Welcome. For presenting.